All right, well, the time has finally come to build a new comp car. This has been a long time coming. If you've been watching for a while, you know the history of the LS Miata. So this is my current comp car. I've been running this thing for years now, and this car did not start out as a competition drift car. The whole point of this car was just to be powerful enough to keep up with the kind of pro-am level cars at the local you know, OSW skid pad, but still be affordable to run, be able to run cheap small tires and have them less. That was it. I had no intentions of competing with this car. Uh, then we found ourselves going to Pro-Am and some other stuff and did well there. So then we went to Clutch Kickers and started competing against FD drivers and we were doing well, uh, but the car needed upgrades. And over the time we've been upgrading this car over and over and over again, we put more power in it. Then we didn't have enough grip, then we put more grip in it, then we didn't have enough power, put more power in it, and it's been kind of a cycle. And we've gotten the car to the point where it's really competitive. It's definitely capable. We won clutch kickers with it. against FD drivers in FD cars. We know it can do it, but we're kind of capped with this car. You know, I built this car originally to be a nice street car too. I figured, you know, I'm gonna put all this time and effort into a car. I wanna be able to drive it around and enjoy it. Well, the car never sees any street use, ever. It's purely a race car and purely a competition drift car at that. And we're kind of to the point in the car now where we're capped. We can't really add any more power because we can't really add any more grip. So there'd be no use for more power because Again, we can't really put any more grip in it. We're limited on tire size because of the size of the car and that we run 15s and it just kind of reached its peak and there's not much more we can do to this car. Not to mention the fact that, you know, if we wanted to run this car next season, for it to be reliable, we'd really need to strip the whole car down and go through the entire thing. I mean, there's components and bushings and everything on this car that has been in here for years and years and years of just straight up abuse. So if we're going to go through all the trouble to rebuild the whole car, we might as well build something that's better suited for what we're doing now. This is one of those things like a use case, you know? I built the car for what I thought it was going to be for. I picked the chassis based off what I thought I was going to do, and that's changed. Now we're heavy in the competition drifting. We're competing against crazy cars, crazy talented drivers, and uh, we need something a little bit more competitive. Again, that's not to say this car is not competitive. This car can still do it, but I've got to drive at 110% for this car to do it. So all that being said, we have bought a new comp car to build. Now, this is kind of funny because we have gone full circle on this. So it started here, well, my mind changed, I wanted to do this, and then that snowballed into this. And then just recently, we kind of circled all the way back around to what I planned to build originally. And timing kind of panned out. We found the perfect car for sale to build. We bought it, it's here. And uh, most of you already know what this is. We have a C6 Z06 race car to build into our new competition drift car. Now, as you can see, this car has already been turned into a race car. The back's cut off of it. It's got a tube rear. It's got a tube front, rear mount radiator. We'll go through this whole thing, but this car was literally the perfect base to start from. It's already very nicely caged. It's got a full TIG welded cage, meets FD specs. Um, and this car being a Z06, that means it has an aluminum frame. And because it has an aluminum frame, there's some special odds and ends you've got to do um, in order to mount the cage because you can't just weld a box to the frame because it's an aluminum frame. You can't weld steel to aluminum, so on and so forth. So this is a pretty elaborate cage, um, an expensive cage to build, and it's already done. It's got a race seat. It's got nice rails. It's got an aftermarket column. It's got a lot of trick stuff. So that's what's so cool to me about this car and what was so appealing was that it's already got a lot of that tedious, time-consuming work out of the way. 
the fab work, the stripping down, so on and so forth. And just saves us a lot of time and money down the road. Cause if we bought a complete car and had to strip it all the way down, try to sell some parts off of it. Cause we're not just going to throw them away and then do all the fab work. It costs more money and it would take a lot more time. And that was the biggest thing for me. Cause I would like to have this car done by next season. And when I say by next season, I don't mean right before the next round of clutch kickers. I mean a couple months in advance so we can start driving the car and working out the bugs because there's always bugs on a fresh build. We're gonna try to do our best and make sure there aren't any, but there are always some bugs. So this car being so far along whew, made it perfect. So uh, we'll start at the back here. As you can see, again, the rear's already been cut off. This is kind of tricky to do. Ah, oh, we got it. Hold on, let me get a, a prop to hold this up. All right, so in the rear back here, we obviously already have a rear mount radiator, little expansion tank. We got AN lines going to bulkhead fittings, some fans, an electric water pump. It's got a fuel cell, really nice, uh, nicely built fuel cell mount. I would like to change this up. There's gonna be quite a few things we need to change on this car. Now we could just plumb it, wire it, finish up the body panel bolting on and such, and run it, which obviously would be the fastest route. But they, I'm trying to build my dream comp car here. I wanna do everything right the first time. And one of the things we'll probably change is the fuel cell. It's a nice fuel cell setup. It's got a big external electric pump, but Radium makes a really nice fuel cell with a built-in surge tank. So basically it's a tank inside a tank, keeps you from having fuel slosh issues. So I'm hoping we can get one that fits in here so we don't have to fabricate a new box because that one's pretty well done. All of the fabric on this car is uh, really well done. It's all TIG welded. The rear bash bar is adjustable so we can kind of have crumple zone, flex zone to the body panels or suck it up right to the body panels. It's got these stanchions for the hatch. We will need to build mounting points for the rear quarters and the rear bumper. Just some minimalistic stuff so everything can kind of move and flex, but it's cool to be able to pop all that stuff off and have access to everything. So this car has some really, really fancy parts on it. Thing one, Moton three-way coilovers. These are super baller, top of the line coilovers, external reservoir, quick disconnect reservoirs, triple adjustable. Now we could run those, but I think uh, the car would do better on a properly spec for drifting and what we're doing set of BCs. And we can sell those and get two or three sets of nice double adjustable BCs. So, you know, that way we have spares and I, I think that's the smarter move. It's also got dual four piston wheel woods already two piece rotors, like super nice setup. Now I'm not too fond of the way it's done. It's like a modified stock knuckle and that moves the toe arm in. We'll have to look at that and address that. See what we wanna do there, but it's already bulkheaded for the brake lines and stuff. Like the work that is done to this car already is really nice. And I mean, the coilovers and the brakes and stuff kind of give you an idea of the, the ain't care with the money that went into this car. So inside we've got a bunch of other parts in here, we got parts over there I'll show you. Um, but you know, oil lines, oil cooler, seat rails, another electric water pump, things like that. But under the hood is where the uh, biggest surprise is. This is uh, pretty wild. So I'll pull the bumper off because I've got this thing just set up here right now. As you can see, tube front with an intercooler, but let me take the hood off and show you. So the hood's got push pins. They don't fit great because of the wastegate. So that'll be something we'll have to address. This car was wrapped. I took all the wrap off of it. I was not a fan. Oh, dang it. So this thing has a Borowski race engine. Now, if you don't know what Borowski is, I honestly didn't until I found this car for sale. They're kind of like Nelson racing engines. They make like crazy turnkey engine packages. So this is a Dart next-gen aluminum block, 427, all-pro LS7 cylinder heads. I think it's a Cowie's crank, you know, pistons, rods, billet intake manifold with dual fuel injectors. And literally this thing is built to the nines. But the coolest thing, the biggest selling point for me is it already has a Daly's Engineering five stage dry sump. If you know me, when it comes to LSs, I uh, preach good oil systems. Oil control is crucial in making your engine live forever. The Miata, even when it had a $2,000 engine, had a dry sump, but the Miata has a two stage dry sump. This is a five stage dry sump. Uh, this is like a uh, top of the line dry sump system. So it's also got a Precision GT42 
turbo giant precision gate. It has a downpipe built that runs all the way to the back because for FD rules, you have to run the exhaust past the axle. So it like loops down there, back under, and all the way out, big four inch downpipe. The fab work on the turbo kit is really solid. You know, the intercooler pipe, simple. I like the intercooler placement, but there is a but coming. I'm not a huge fan of turbo LS cars for drifting. It just, I don't know why, you know, they kind of make sense, but it just, it's not something I really want for whatever reason. I can't exactly put my finger on why I don't like it. But if I were gonna do it, I'd do something like Jonathan Hurst's setup where, you know, just a built 5.3, because a built 5.3 is gonna make, you know, handle a thousand wheel, which you don't, you're not really gonna need to make any more than that. So what I'm getting at is this engine is <laughs> the definition of overkill for what we're doing, for the type of driving, what the car is gonna be. This engine is absolutely absurd. So what I'm thinking is we pull this engine set up out, we keep the dry sump, sell the engine complete with the intake manifold, sell the turbo setup, and then buy a Texas Speed all out NA race mode. You know, we should be able to make like 700 wheel NA with a high compression, big cubic inch LS, and it costs less than what we can sell this motor for. And then if we need to down the road, we can have some headroom to add a blower, or add nitrous if we need to bump the power up. But with this car being a Z06, it's pretty light and should be pretty light when it's finished. I, I think 700 wheel will be a really good number for this car, at least for clutch kickers and all the type of stuff I've done so far. Now we may start going to bigger, faster tracks. We may need more than that. And again, if we do, we can spray it or put a blower on it, but we'll see. I mean, there is another option and that is to just finish the car as it is. Leave it turbo, wire it, plumb it, boom, bada bing, bada boom, go drive it. But I don't know, I don't know. I'm still up in the air on that, but those are kind of the, the two options. I'm still not convinced on what power plant I want. I always said VET with like a 700 horsepower NA motor was my plan and I've circled back to the VET, so I'll probably circle back to the NA motor, at least for now. Root spoiler is another idea. Centrifugal supercharger is another option. We've already got the intercooler and the mounting for it. I don't know, let me know what you guys think on that front, but that's kind of my rough game plan as of right now. So yeah, uh, another weak link on the car is the fact that it does still have the stock rear trans setup. Now it is a Z06 trans and diff, which obviously they're a lot stronger. It's got a trans cooler and whatnot, but that's not really gonna be strong enough for what we're doing. We could probably run it for a little while, but we're gonna need to put a better trans in it. Now there's a couple options. We can do a built stock trans by RPM, get the trans face plated, like basically what's in Leroy, built diff face plated trans. And we can do a crazy sequential and winner's quick change, which would be ideal to have the gearing change ability. Some people are starting to put the trans at the front or at least trying to. So instead of having the trans axle set up with the trans in the rear, put the trans in the front like it is on most cars and then mount a winner's quick change back here. That would be a lot easier for serviceability and such, you know, because you don't have to pull the whole subframe trans axle torque tube setup out to uh, get to the clutch. But I don't know, those options are still up in the air. I need to kind of price out the different routes and see what I want to do. But we got a few options there, but it does need a trans it's a crazy motor. Stock trans, <laughs> so that's gotta change. Past that, it's got sway bars. It's got a custom built angle kit. So it's actually like a pretty nice angle kit. I like how they did the blade style sway bar. I like the control arm. Um, it seems to get good angle, but it would be tough because it's a one-off kit, so we wouldn't have a spare. I'd rather put some off the shelf kit, but I'm waiting to see if there's any more companies that come out with kits for these cars to kind of determine what I wanna do angle wise angle is a big big factor in how the car feels so i don't want to jump the gun on that we'll see how it is with this um and then of course more will woods here in the front six piston two-piece rotor it's got cosmos wheels and uh came with a bunch of extras so let's get into that um the rear panels are here we've got extra cosmos wheels we've got a pedal box that is designed to bolt in hanging you could see there's like a plate in there off the cage with the stock that gas pedal now we might change this i don't really want to stay drive by wire but we'll see that's easy stuff to figure out down the road but already has a pedal box already has a handbrake got a full tilton triple disc clutch and some fancy carbon fiber pieces we got an hgk carbon dash carbon rear firewall and carbon shift bezel area uh, this stuff alone is so sick like carbon dash goals and that thing weighs absolutely nothing. So to put the firewall in, obviously we'll have to take this aluminum one that's already here out. 
Uh, but again, there's some things I want to change anyway, so we'll probably throw the carbon one in there. We might end up getting some more carbon pieces. So the hatch itself is fiberglass, factory fiberglass, and uh, it's heavy. It is a very, very heavy unit. We could shave a ton of weight by going to a carbon one with a Lexan window. That might give us options for better ducting. It came with this custom made ducting that ducts the air kind of like out the rear bumper. You can see the bumper has cutouts. So that's pretty neat. We'll have to see how all that really works together. But yeah, that's pretty much the gist of it. I think I didn't forget any parts. It's the engine stand that the engine comes on when you buy a Borowski engine. Like I said, it was, uh, it seems like a no expense spared project. Uh, the guy was just kind of tired of it, ran out of motivation to finish it and drive it and whatever. But this thing finish is gonna be pretty much like a pro one level car. So I'm super excited about this. We're finally gonna have a big boy race car. Just sitting in this thing, man, it, it, it feels surreal. Like it still doesn't even feel real yet. <laughs> you know, it's, yeah, it's it's pretty crazy. I wanted a vet for a long time and the, this, could not have worked out better. This car popped up for sale at the perfect time, right when I decided, all right, that it is. That's where my heart wants to go. That's what I want. That to me is the logical choice. Let's do a vet and boom. So yeah, here is the new comp car build. Like I said, those are the general plans. Uh, we'll probably push this thing into the corner for a little while, just while we wrap up some stuff on some other projects. We gotta fix the LS Miata for the next round of comp in a couple weeks. Some upgrades I wanna make to the 8.6. And we got the dang turbo truck. That thing cannot get pushed to the back burner. So I want to tidy up those loose ends, start getting parts together, parts ordered, parts here for this, figure out what direction to go with the engine platform and uh, get all that squared away. And then we will dive into this thing full force. And man, if we don't have this thing done by next season, you guys can call me a lazy POS or whatever you want. Cause there's no reason why we shouldn't with how far along we are with the starting chassis. So. I know it was long-winded, but I'm really excited to show you guys this thing. And uh, yeah, let me know what you think of it. Finally got a vet to build. So yeah, all that jibber-jabber out of the way. I just want to say thank you guys for watching. Thanks for supporting and merch sales and all that stuff is what is going to allow us to build this car, which is, again, going to be my dream comp car. That's the exciting thing for me about this is that this is a dedicated race car. I know now that I'm building a race car for competition. You know, I'm not building a car I'm going to drive on the street and take on cruises. No, no, no. This is a race car, and we're going to build it accordingly. And that, that alone is exciting. Race trans, race motor, screaming, slight as possible. I, I, I'm pretty hyped to uh, see the end product and get, get diving into this build. But as I said, I'm going to quit Chipper Chaperon. Thank you guys for watching. Thanks for subscribing. I'll see you next time. Goodbye. So this is what it looks like next to the LS Miata. <laughs> It honestly is not as much bigger as I kind of would have thought. You know, having them sit here side by side, definitely a good bit more wheelbase and a good bit wider. But the overall car, not a ton bigger. And this is with all the rear panels kind of loosely on. They just bolted on in the front, the quarters, and then bolted to the bumper. And then that's just on those stanchions. So it shouldn't be too difficult to build mounts for the rear stuff here. But uh, yeah, that build going to be in full effect. Let's get to it.